BBC News at one. One of the country's top health officials has admitted that everyone is frustrated by the low number of tests being carried out to detect coronavirus. Professor Paul Cosford of Public Health England says measures are in place to increase testing for NHS workers after continued criticism of the government's strategy. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson used a video message to stress that that is the key to defeating the pandemic. So far, only 2,000 out of half a million frontline NHS workers in England have been tested, with ministers blaming a shortage of chemicals. Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge has become the first in the UK to use a new machine to diagnose the virus, which can give a result within 90 minutes. And in Spain, the number of people who've died after testing positive for coronavirus is now more than 10,000. We'll have more on all of those developments. Our first report this lunchtime is from our correspondent, Richard Galkin. A desolate North London car park. Not a place you'd imagine to play a critical part in the battle against coronavirus. But this and other similar drive through locations around the country now part of the push to ramp up testing of frontline NHS staff, which is finally getting underway. Mm. The test these health workers are being given mm. is to see if they have the virus. If they're in the clear, mm. it's very significant. I think it's a very good idea, mm. it's quite efficient, um, and it allows us to go back to work as soon as we finish. Mm. So that's the best thing we could possibly do for our NHS staff, to be honest. Mm. Still in isolation himself after contracting the virus, the Prime Minister is yet again stressing the importance of testing. And I want to say a special word about testing because it is so important. As I've said for weeks and weeks, this is the way through. This is how we will unlock the coronavirus puzzle. This is how we will defeat it in the end. And yet, he and his government face sharp criticism. Mm. The testing NHS staff and others should have been mm. prioritised and ramped up much earlier. Mm. So far, only 3,500 frontline NHS staff out of half a million have been tested. And there's now a global shortage of the chemicals needed mm. to make the tests. And this has forced the government to change tack. It's now calling for many other laboratories around the country, like this one, to carry out as many tests as possible. We should be able to roll out 500 a day next week, or 2,000 a week, and we hope soon after that to go up to around 2,000 a day, which, as you know, is in fact the total number of um, NHS uh, workers who have been tested up until now. And the work staff are doing here is evoking memories of the Second World War. It's a bit like coming to Earth. Uh, we're one of the small boats. The government is putting in uh, the bigger ships, and um, we hope those will get running as quickly as possible. But in the meantime, we're just doing all the best we can with a small or a fairly small boat that is just as strong as it needs to be. Getting all these laboratories around the country to take part in this concerted effort could lead to 100,000 people being tested a day. Wherever there is capacity, we need to be able to get that on stream and use it, but it has to be capacity that works, that the uh, quality is as good as it needs to be, so we get good test results, we get accurate test results, because it, it is actually worse to have wrong tests than to have no tests at all. In another development, the World Health Organization is now considering whether to change the guidance about using face masks to help limit the spread of coronavirus. There are concerns it could cause more of a shortage for key health workers. The surgical masks are really needed in healthcare settings, and often there's not enough supply, and we have to prioritize that. That's got to be the number one priority. But if we can get more than we need for just healthcare workers, I think it would be a good idea to start using them in the community. And as we get closer to the peak of this deadly outbreak, more signs today of the scale of the challenge the country now faces in the next few weeks. Already, 20,000 regular troops like these have been drafted in to provide logistical help for the NHS. But now, the reservists are also being called up. 3,000 of them. Richard Galkin, BBC News. Let's talk to our assistant political editor, Norman Smith. So the government's still very much talking about more testing, the need to do more testing. How is it going to achieve this, Norman? 
Well, they're hoping that as more small independent laboratories come on board, they can significantly boost the rather woeful numbers that we've reached at the moment. But it's a pretty dire situation with one leading medical research centre this morning comparing the situation with Dunkirk. The hope of the government, however, seems to be less about the current test, which we're all having a great big row about, and more about a new test, which is coming on stream in uh, the civil days and weeks, which would test people who had coronavirus to see whether they had built up antibodies to the disease and were therefore immune to the virus. And the thinking is this test would enable them to know whether they could release people back into the community and therefore potentially could lead to millions of people being freed from the lockdown. And the government has ordered some three and a half million of those tests, although they are not yet currently available. And there is part of the problem. That may be an exit strategy in the months ahead. It is no answer to the current crisis where doctors want to know whether they're safe to operate, patients want to know whether they've been infected with coronavirus, medical staff self-isolating at home want to know whether they can return to the ward. So this new test could be an exit strategy down the line. It is no answer to the coronavirus crisis that we're facing now. Norman, for now, thank you. Let's talk about some of that with our health editor, Hugh Kim, because Norman, nodding to the future, what about right here and now, Hugh? Well, Jane, the current situation is that NHS workers across all different professions uh, in the health service want to get back to work if they're at home, self-isolating with a member of the family, or they have a few symptoms but they're not sure. If they can be tested and told they're negative, they don't have the virus right now, they can get back onto the front line. That is the immediate challenge. Now, it is a complicated system. That's been one of the, the problems with all this. You've got public health laboratories who traditionally have done testing. You've now got, or the last month or so, you've got hospital laboratories who've been brought on stream and they're trying hard to expand that capacity. But hospitals, certainly in England, only got the word this week that they should start testing their staff. All the tests up until then had been just for patients, which is very important as well. Then you've got this new strand, which only came on stream at the weekend of these drive-in, you saw in Richard's piece there, these drive-in tests set up by the Department of Health, the government, for a fast-track system for NHS workers. And they've got to a few thousand already. I think it's slightly unfair to say it's only a few thousand, because it only started at the weekend. But some might say, why didn't this happen a long time before? Matt Hancock is now calling for the private sector and other labs to come in and take part in this great national effort, that may well boost capacity. But again, the question may be asked, why is it taking till now? Indeed, thank you for now. Hugh Kim. Well, Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge has become the first in the UK to use a new machine to diagnose COVID-19. 